Hello everyone, Jack here, welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be taking you through some weekly checks that you should be doing on your car to ensure it stays healthy and runs reliably. If you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and let's get into the video. So those of you that have visited the channel before will recognise this. This is my 2003 Subaru Legacy uh, station wagon. Um, and I'm going to be showing you the checks on it today. So first things first, we're going to open the bonnet, which on this car is just up here. If you're not too sure where the catch for your bonnet is, um, have a look in your owner's manual, it'll be in there. We'll give it a quick Google. Um, it's usually under the driver's uh, steering column, but on a lot of European cars, it's actually around the passenger side in the footwell. If you're not too sure, have a look, have a feel about failing that, get yourself on Google or in your owner's manual. Now, on most cars, there'll be a secondary catch, so it's usually in the middle or to the right. Again, this could be something for your owner's manual or to Google. And on the Subaru Legacy, you move this to the left, lift up so if your bonnet holds itself up when you lift it up that means it's got gas struts on it so you won't need to do this bit if you don't have gas struts and it wants to fall down as you can see mine will now if I move my arm you'll have a bar like this so find this bar you're going to support the bonnet with it again if you're not too sure consult your owner's manual or check it out on Google as you can see I've got my bonnet staying in place so that's nice and secure now and means we can safely have a look under the engine bay now, as I mentioned before, these checks are checks that you should be doing on a weekly basis um, to ensure the longevity of your engine and to make sure everything's running as smooth and healthy as possible. So these checks aren't going to involve you jacking up the car or anything like that. So these are some quick and easy checks to do just to ensure that your engine's going to carry on running reliably and healthy. So don't worry, it's not too advanced. Also, majority of these checks won't require any tools. Um, so if you're thinking, I don't have any tools so I can't do anything like this, you can. As long as you've got a keen eye and a spare 10 minutes, you can carry these out. So this is the engine bay, obviously, of the Subaru. So first thing I advise checking is basically just checking if anything looks bad. Um, look for some any scorch marks from signs of you know like a bit of an electrical fire look for leaks look for you know pools of water um, tears you know something like that rust that sort of thing just have a look and see if anything doesn't look right or looks out of place now looking in here I can't see anything um, other than the fact that there's a belt missing off this pulley I know about that so I'm not worried but if you were to have a look in here and you weren't expecting to not see that then obviously that's something you'd need to get investigated so there are two really important liquids to make your engine run sweet and reliable that's coolant and oil now engine oil will always have this sort of little can icon on it and that's so you can tell what goes into this cap as you can see the oil dipstick has got the same logo on um, that's usually always yellow um, so you can tell that apart in most cars now coolant this will look a little bit different in lots of cars so this here is your expansion tank so as you can see mine's got a lot of blue liquid in it so i don't need to put any in that essentially what you're checking for is if this expansion tank is empty if you can't see any liquid and there is actually some indentation markings there so full and low down the bottom if it's not on the full line that's bad and you should fill the coolant up if you're wondering what coolant to use um, i suggest going to halfords and letting them know what car you've got and they'll be able to provide you with the coolant that you need. Coolant's a pretty standard thing though, um, so if you were to just go online and type in coolant or antifreeze, you'd pretty much get the right thing for your car. The one thing I do recommend checking though is if the coolant is pre-mixed or whether you need to mix it, um, but that's really simple. If you need to mix in, it's just like making a glass of squash. You pour in the squash, or in this case the coolant, and then you add water. And that usually happens in a 50-50 mix, so if you put in a litre of coolant, you put in a litre of water. So unless this is completely empty, do not put just water in here. So the problem with that is when it gets cold, water will go into the radiator pipes and into the engine and it will freeze and we'll get little blocks of ice in there and that will expand and if it goes and does that in the engine block, you have a big problem and you'll have to replace the engine because it will split. Now what you want to do is just check that all the caps are tight on the coolant system. And the coolant system is a pressurised system. So do not open any of these caps if your engine is still warm. Make sure your engine's cold. I'm doing this first thing in the morning so it hasn't been on since yesterday. What you're going to do is just turn this cap. Just check. That looks nice and clean on there. A bit of water's fine. And you can see the, the level of water in the radiator is at the top. So that's fine too. You're basically just checking that there's no yellow mayonnaise looking stuff on the back of that, which could indicate an issue. Once you've checked that, push the cap back on and twist it. 
and make sure it's tight. Because as I said, that's pressurised and without it being pressurised properly, it won't work properly. So that's one of the really important liquids out of the way. Next is engine oil. So what we're going to do first is spin the top off this. And we're going to check for that mayonnaise substance again. Now if you see a little bit, that's not a problem. It's probably just because obviously we're in lockdown at the minute, you're not driving a lot. But if there's a lot on there, you might want to get that investigated. But that looks good to me. So we're going to put that back on and again, make sure it's really tight. Okay, so now we're going to check the oil dipstick. So we've checked the cap, there's no funny coloured mayonnaise looking stuff on there. So that's good to go. Now we're going to check the oil level. So, pull the dipstick out and just grab, I'm using a towel or an old rag or literally anything. I'm going to wipe that off, put the dipstick back in and pull it back out. So as you can see, it's quite faint on camera. There's an F there and that stands for full. So as long as your oil is not too far below that, as mine isn't, you're good to go. So if there's not a lot of oil at all on the dipstick underneath that F, then you'll probably need to put some more oil in. But if you're very close to the F, or you're actually on the F, then you've got nothing to worry about. Now just clean the dipstick off so you can see it a bit better. And you can see that Allen F there. So if you can see that L, or that bottom dot, you should definitely consider putting some more oil into your car and if you can see the F or you're on the F line then you should be good to go. Now I should point out that not all cars use L and F, some will have just a top line and some will have a bottom line. It'd be very obvious where the top and the bottom line is but if you are struggling um, then have a read of your owner's manual or again type into Google and I'm sure there'll be something to help you there. In this case it's an L and an F, um, on the Mini it's just a, a yellow dipstick um, and if you can basically see the top of the yellow bit the very tip of it you're all good and if you can see a lot of yellow stuff you need to top your oil up so now we're finished with the dipstick I've cleaned it off again I'm just gonna put it back into the dipstick tube and if you have verified that you need some more oil then what I would do is go to www.whatoildoineed.com and type in your registration plate and that'll tell you exactly what oil you need for your car if you're still unsure head to Euro Car Parts or Halfords and ask one of the staff members in there and they'll be able to give you a hand and let you know exactly what oil you need. So I'm going to quickly show you how to use this website. So Morris Lubricants are a Shrewsbury based company which is where I'm from so I'm happy to support a, uh, a local business. I'm going to show you how to use it so I've gone to whatoildoineed.com so you go here to UK registrations only it says so type in your registration plate so HK53 BKX which is the Subaru press the search button as you can see it's picked up it's a Subaru Legacy Estate 2 litre all wheel drive and the good thing about it, it also tells you the capacity as you can see there so it's saying I'm going to need 4 litres of 5W30 you can buy it off our website or you can take that knowledge into Halfords, Eurocar Parts or anywhere else and purchase your oil so if you've identified you need oil in your engine what you'll need to do is take the oil filler cap off just like you did before just like so grab yourself a funnel or if you're brave you can pour straight into there and that's where you fill your oil so when you're pouring the oil do it like I did in this video where I show you how to do an oil change if you're interested I'll leave a link in the iCard um, but as I do in this video I pour the bottle sideways and that just allows the flow that comes out of the bottle to be a lot smoother once you finish adding oil put your oil cap back on and make sure it's tight. So next up on the weekly checklist is windscreen washer fluid. Now I'm fairly certain everybody that's driven a car has filled up their windscreen washer fluid um, once upon a time but it's definitely something you should check weekly you don't want to be caught out on a dirty day with no windscreen fluid. So to tell which lid is the windscreen washer fluid just look for the windscreen shaped icon with the water on it. This is pretty much what they all look like and in my case it's got this little stick on it so we're going to pull that out and then fill your washers with windscreen washer fluid or indeed water once you've filled it put your cap back on and make sure it's tight now there is indeed more fluid um, in the engine bay um, but they're not really things that you'd need to check on a weekly basis um, things like brake fluid power steering fluid are just things that you'd probably check on like a monthly or you know 
couple of monthly interval they're not really things that get used that much so i wouldn't worry about them too much but i will show you quickly how to check them just to ensure that they're not running dry because you don't want to run your brakes or power steering dry so brake fluid will almost always be signified by this icon and on the side of the brake fluid bottle there's a max and a min line you can see i'm not actually on the max line so i do need to fill this up a little bit but i will be doing a full flush soon so hit subscribe if you want to see that video and this here is the power steering fluid um, as you can see it's got a minimum and a maximum line the subaru one actually has a cold minimum and a cold maximum line which is the reading i need to look at now because the engine's cold and you can see i actually need to top this up a little bit too so i'm going to go and grab some of that at some point and fill that up too so that's all the fluid things and the engine bay of the car um, next we're just going to check over a few more things to make sure your car is consistently roadworthy and reliable and we'll make sure that you can stay safe and legal on the road so what we're going to do is drop the bonnet down we're going to remove the bonnet stay and put it back into its place and make sure we shut the bonnet properly now we're going to head on into the car and check the window wipers and wash jets so we're going to turn the key to on you can obviously start the car if you want to i'm going to close the door because i don't want to get soaked and what we're going to do is we're going to just test the washers make sure they're working as they are and check that the window wipers aren't leaving any smears on the glass as you can see they're not and uh, yeah obviously they're working all fine now we're going to do the same on the rear so we're going to activate them with the water and as you can see it's spraying the water and clearing that off so front and back washers are all okay so first thing we're going to do is check that your plates are clean and readable so as you can see mine are clean and easily readable you can read that reg plate there's no screws that are obscuring any letters and it's clean and not full of dirt and i'm also going to do this check on the back because the back is just as important you can see this plate's a little bit dirty so what i'm going to do is just get a damp cloth and wipe that off next thing i'm going to do is go around and check all the tires i'm just going to check they're not flat or obviously flat um, and they seem to just be holding air so just go around give them a bit of a squeeze just check they're clearly not flat you know sitting on the floor um, and also just run your hand along the outside just checking for any stones or cuts or bulges because you wouldn't want to blow out an entire as you're going around i'd also make sure that you've got all of the valve caps present on the wheels just so that it doesn't let any air out slowly whilst you're driving as road grime and dirt gets into there you obviously don't want it to let out the air and finally when you're making your way around checking the tires just have a quick look in and just check whether your brakes look okay what you're basically looking for are big grooves in the discs which as you can see in my case we're doing okay so there's nothing to worry about there so what i've done is i've put my key into the ignition i've turned my hazard lights on and my main lights i'm also going to turn my fog lights on just like so now we're going to go around and check all of the lights on the car so make sure you check your mirror indicators make sure you check all your lights at the front so i've got my full beams on i've got my normal lights on my indicators make sure you check all the sides and we're going to come to the back as you can see my lights are on the indicators are on my rear fog lights on excuse the damage me being a bit heavy-handed and my brake and fogs are okay as well now without starting the car i'm just going to put it into reverse and check the reverse light and as you can see that's illuminated too so all of our lights are okay I would also recommend that as you're going around the car just get a damp cloth and give all the lights a bit of a clean just so that they're always visible and they're not going to cause you any issues um, seeing in the dark or also anybody seeing you in the dark and the last light to check is the brake light so grab a friend or a partner and have them press the brake while you're standing on the outside just check that all three brake lights are working your brake lights will be in the corners and on the top I'll show you what it looks like now so as you can see, the brake lights are all good too. So make sure you turn all your lights off, turn the ignition off, make sure you take the car out of reverse as well. So the next time you start it, you don't go flying backwards. So yeah, 
other than that, there's not really many sort of weekly checks that you need to do on a car. They're sort of the, the main ones. But yeah, these are some weekly checks that you can do on your car to ensure that it stays happy and healthy for longer and to ensure that it stays reliable and safe to drive on the UK roads. Thank you for watching this video. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Go and check me out on Instagram, at Grinding Gears Official. Make sure you hit subscribe. Check out my website if you feel like buying a Grinding Gears sticker grindinggears.uk and I'll see you in the next one.